YouTube, how's it going? Frogs Angels is back, and I got rookie grades. NFL 2018 first round rookie grades based on their performance in the 2018 season. I had another video that just came out not too long ago. It was regrading the first round of the draft. Two, two totally different videos. Uh, some of you didn't really understand. They you kind of thought what this video is going to be is what that video was. That that's that's actually false. I know it's a little confusing, but I tried to explain in that video. I also pinned in the comments kind of my system for grading the value of a draft pick. So this one is just strictly a one year, just 2018 grading the players' performances. This is player grades. The other one you couldn't compare players based off grades. This one you can. There's really no system in this one. It's just grading how how well I think the players played. Uh, so two totally different videos. If you haven't seen. The other one, please check it out. I regrade the first round of the draft. A lot goes into that. You know, that starts with the NFL draft, too. I can't really change how I grade. It starts with the value of each pick. A lot goes into it. But this one, not too much goes into it. I just grade the players based on their performance. I think people wanted this video, and that's what they thought the other one was going to be. So I bring in you, I'm bringing you this one now. We're, I'm also going to grade each team by their draft classes. I'm going to get to that, too eventually here in the very very near future uh, follow our twitter as you can see at the top right frogs underscore angels there's a link in the description i talk about the draft on there i talk during live games lots of good stuff uh, we might be changing our channel name too to be more fitting so be on the lookout for that um, we have merch for frogs angels people requested that before the name went away they wanted the retro stuff so there's links in the description for all that but let's get into it we're going to go in the draft order even though this is not a draft value grading video i'm just grading the players so the first pick was Baker Mayfield. On his performance this year, it was an A+. Plus. He was my number one quarterback, and he kind of played up to it. You know, he played up to it. He was excellent, helped the Browns win games. We know without him, if he never came in, um, they wouldn't have won that many games. You know, this team would look a lot different right now. I think coaching staff and, you know, Baker's the guy going forward, obviously. But A-plus on this season. Let's see if he can continue to do it. I expect him to. Um, really enjoyed watching Baker this year. He's really fun to watch. Uh, pick two was Saquon Barkley. He also gets an A plus, best rookie running back, uh, and he was dominant. You know, despite having the weaker offensive line, you know, we saw how it affected him in the past game. Didn't really affect Barkley. Um, you know, against good defenses, he he still did his he still played his game. You know, broke tackles, caught the ball out of the backfield at a high level. Um, you know, showed that elite speed downfield he has. Got that extra gear. You know, very another fun guy to watch. Uh, a plus for him on his rookie season. So the, the difference between this video and the other one, this one I'm actually grading the players. I'm not actually grading the players on the re the regrading the first round, the regrading the draft. I'm not actually grading the players. I'm grading, grading the team on the value of the pick. Hope I hope everyone can understand. That's kind of why I made this video is to for everybody to understand, make everyone happy here too. Sam Donald, I gave a B plus. You know he was kind of hot and cold. You know he he did throw a lot of turnovers, a lot of costly mistakes. Uh, but at the end of the year, I liked how he picked it up. You know, he's got some potential, but this is based off this year. Uh, B-plus is what I gave him. Um, you know, I do take into account that he didn't really have the best team around him. You know, offensive line, I guess, stepped up pretty well, better than expected. The receiver core, not too good. You know, kind of did what he had to do out there. Game of B-plus. And Denzel Ward, I, got, I gave him an A-plus, you know. As a corner, you know, he played at a high level, was all over the place. You know, you can, I, I, there's going to be more A-pluses in this video than the other video, a lot of higher grades, I should say, because in terms of dra uh, the draft, it's hard to get an A-plus out of me. You know, you have to get you have to find extreme value. Uh, in this video, there's not a lot of expectations for rookies, so if they play at a high level, they get an A-plus. A little easier to get the A-plus. That's just the way I do it. Uh, so Denzel Ward gets an A-plus. Bradley Chubb got an A. You know, he started off a little slow. But at the same time, he was kind of a strictly strictly a defensive end coming out. Like I, I thought he was a four three. He was a four three end at NC State, and I thought if he went to a three four, I think I thought he would still play end because because of his strength, his size. Uh, they moved him outside a linebacker, so it's a little bit of an adjustment so that you know you can understand the, the little slow start. Uh, but then played very well going forward. Couldn't quite give him the A plus, but gave him an A. Uh, he's got a bright future. Quentin Nelson gets an A-plus. Colts' offense line goes from worst to first. Big reason, Quentin Nelson. Uh, he was dominant. You know, uh, what offensive lineman gets the highlight reel that he gets, you know? It's, it's great. So he, he played outstanding this year. Uh, good big reason for the Colts' success. Obviously, more goes into that. But he gets an A-plus. 
Josh Allen was the, was the next pick. I gave him a B plus. Yeah, started off slow, had some injuries, but I really thought he finished the year. He was very impressive the way he finished the year. So, um, you know, I, I really like I really liked his game. You know, especially a guy that is he was known as a raw player too. Like he, he was going to struggle at first, and this is a video based off the first year. And I wouldn't say he struggled. He definitely played. I thought he played pretty pretty well too. Not the best team around him. So I like the way he finished. Game a B plus. Should have a bright future, but again, this is the grades are based off this year. Uh, Roquan got an A plus. You know, a lot of questions because he wouldn't show up to practice, wouldn't show up to training camp because the contracts so will that affect his play? It did not. He was he was fantastic, uh, both in every part of the game. I guess for his game, you know, tackling, um, blitzing, got about five sacks, I believe. And then covering, too. I thought he that was the thing that stood out because maybe that's the thing you expect him to struggle a little bit. But he was outstanding there. Got Gave him an A-plus on his season. Mike McGlinchey got an A-minus. You know, didn't really play to an A-plus That's that, or an A. That's why I put him down here. But uh, still an A-minus. Still, still think highly of him. I like that he had to kind of switch positions based off other people's injuries or the need at the time for that offensive line. So that was impressive to me. I gave him an A-. On to the next one. Uh, Josh Rosen gave a C. He struggled this year. Um, you know, maybe his play, you could argue, is maybe a C-, minus, D+, plus, but at the same time, uh, they kind of threw him into a bad situation. You know, he did have his moments where you see, uh, yeah, that's that's the Josh Rosen. That's that's the guy. So he had his moments, didn't have the weapons. So I thought C was pretty fitting there. You know, a disaster, disastrous for the Cardinals. They throw him in there, and, you know, the, the coaching staff wasn't good. So I thought he managed what he had, but obviously not a good season. That's why I gave him a C. Uh, Megan Fitzpatrick, I gave an A. I thought that was uh, pretty fitting for him at the A grade. Uh, made plays this year. So that's where, that's where I put him. Vita Vea, I gave a C plus. Um, you know, didn't didn't play to the expectations, I guess. But this was a tough one too because you know I know he's a good player, but you know it didn't. The Bucks defense was kind of a mess too. You know, people were able to throw all over him. Um, you know, really wasn't the chance to get pressure. I also don't think he fit the defense. I think he fits the defense more now with Todd Bowles in there. Uh, so C plus. Uh, is is where I put him there. I thought that was pretty fitting there. On uh, the next pick it was Deron Payne. I gave him an A minus. Uh, really, they brought him in to stop the run. He stopped the run. You know, he didn't play at, at an A plus level like or the A level of some of these other guys, but pretty darn close. So I I gave Deron Payne an A minus on the year. Marcus Davenport, I gave an A minus as well. You know, if it wasn't for that injury, maybe he would have been an A, maybe even an A plus. He was producing sacks. Injury happened. Didn't do too much when coming back, but. Um, you know, bright future, still a very good player. Basically, he's in that A range because he produced sacks, but he's at the A minus because the injury slowed him down a little bit. Uh, Colt Miller gave him a D. You know, he did get the the, the reps, did get the the snaps, got the experience on a young team, a team and a, a rebuilding team. That's great for the future, great for his potential. But this is based off one year. Uh, did give up a lot of pressure. Did get a little better towards the end of the year. So I gave him a D. And Tremaine Edmonds was next. I gave him an A. Uh, I love his potential, love his future. Didn't quite get that A+. Plus. You know, looking at Roquan Smith, I thought he played a little better this year. Um, maybe another linebacker played a little better. But Tremaine Edmonds was everywhere. That's everything you ask. Um, he's going to get better, but he was already very good, I think. So I gave him an A. Derwin James is an A+. Plus, pretty obvious. Uh, today's prototype safety really does it all. Can line up in multiple different spots. A+. Plus. Jared Alexander gets an A. Uh, this one's pretty borderline too because I really like the way he played. Um, he's a playmaker. He's got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of potential. Great future. I gave him an A. Um, you know the Packers secondary was kind of mess. Now, now really not because they could use a safety or two. But uh, Alexander and Josh Jackson pretty fun to watch. Bright future there. Gave him an A. Leighton Van Der Esch got an A plus. You know he was dominant, tackling machine. Uh, another guy like Roquan Smith. You know what impressed me was something you didn't really expect in his rookie season from him is him his ability to to cover too. Uh, pretty solid for for that type of middle linebacker. So very impressive A plus season. Obviously, uh, people were not happy with happy with me on that one for giving an A. And for the draft value, you know that it's a totally different video. I hope people, I hope this helps people understand a little more. I explained it in that video, and I pinned in the comments kind of my my grading system, but it's a little different. 
basically, this one's player grades. The other one's not. Um, this one's a one-year end result. The other one is obviously not. Uh, so a lot goes into the other one. This one is just how these players play, and I think that's what a lot of you viewers out there were looking for. Um, so he did play at an A-plus level. There, there's no doubt about that this year. Uh, Frank Ragnow, I gave him a B plus, was able to start a lot of games. You know, didn't really stand out. Lions offense line did struggle a little bit. Not saying it's his fault or anything. There were some injuries, um, but B plus for him. Uh, you know, should be good in the future. Got uh, got a lot of reps there. Uh, Billy Price game a C minus. You know, I think he played played about ten games. I think it was, uh, and it did struggle at times. You know. Um, could have even put it lower. I thought the Bengals' offense line did step up, though, this year compared to last year, but it's, I don't know if it's really due to him. I, I, I view the offense line as a unit. They all have to play well to work together, so a little bit of bonus points for the Bengals' offense. The offense line wasn't pretty, but it stepped up from last year. Uh, maybe that has more to do with uh, the Cordy Glenn trade, if anything. So C-minus for Billy Price. Uh, Rashawn Evans I gave an A-minus. This one was tough because he didn't really play in the beginning of the year. Kind of had to... Uh, fit in a little more, learn the defense a little more, but I thought he was outstanding at the end of the year. Uh, but you would like to see a little more, but A- minus. I thought I thought that was fitting. People also had a problem with – I think people were comparing this one to Van Der Esch, and that, that's where people went wrong. I understand it's a little confusing, I understand, but um, I wasn't comparing players in the other ones. Uh, as you can see here, Van Der Esch had the better season, but the reason Rashawn Evans got an A-plus in the draft one was because – he was a top 12 player of mine. The Titans got him where they got him. I still believe he will reach that top 12 potential. Um, and he it, it really proved my point at the end of the year that he can reach that, reach that potential. So the Titans got great, great value at the same time of getting a good player and a guy that grew and improved throughout the year. So that's why he got an A-plus in the draft. Um, but clearly, I think Van Der Esch had a better season. thought it was pretty clear, and that shows here. The other video was not that. I know I keep coming back to this, but I want to make sure everyone understands. I want everybody happy here. Um, Isaiah Wynn, great pick, um, but you can't really grade it in either video because he didn't play at all, so he, it's really not fair to grade it at all. Um, Patriots don't really need him. That's the crazy part, uh, but he's a heck of a talent. They got him and his teammate, Sony Michelle, all in the first round. Uh, DJ Moore, I gave it a B plus. You know, there was some games where he was there. there's the DJ Moore we wanted. You know, that's the one. And there's some games where it was like wasn't terrible. It was like, eh, you know. Uh, so he did what he needed to do. Came in there, uh, shifty receiver, got a bright, bright future, uh, but didn't blow me away. Was pretty good, but didn't blow me away. So B plus fits that, I think. Uh, Hayden Hurst, I gave a D. Um, don't like it as a draft value pick. Don't like it as the way he played. Obviously, he can grow. He has potential. Uh, I guess I like the way he blocked, but didn't do a whole lot of anything, so I gave it a D. Maybe that's even being generous. Um, Calvin Ridley, I gave an A. You know, reason it's on an A plus is because you know he started off really strong. Touchdowns came in the first half of the season, kind of little went a little quiet there at the end, but still a very good season. Going to be a very good receiver on that on that team, so I gave an A. You know, got quite a few touchdowns there. Uh, Rashad Penny, I gave a D plus. Could thought about giving it a D, but D plus slight upgrade because you know he is playing behind a pretty darn good running back, Chris Carson. When Penny did get his his reps, he he you know he showed he can play, but at the same time he didn't really get on the field and and showed that you know even he could be third string at time. Mike Davis was uh, ahead of him at times, so had had to stick in that D range. Next pick was Terrell Edmonds. This is a borderline one. Was C plus to B minus? Uh, you know, it was a little lower in the draft value because, you know, I thought they could have went a different direction. You know, the value wasn't really there. But he, he played in a, an okay season, really. Um, unique player can play in different ways at safety position. You see how it is now. So he's got a lot of potential. You know, at times he he shined, but for the most part, it was just kind of an okay season. It went with the B minus. You know, it's kind of borderline C plus B minus. 29th pick was Tavin Bryan, C minus there. Um, don't doubt his potential. I think he's got a lot of potential. He's a good player, you know, a good athlete for his size. He he um, he's going to learn from that Jags defense that I think, which I think is still good. Good minds over there, but uh, that's just the thing. You know, he was kind of a backup because of the good defensive talent there. Uh, didn't he got reps and showed he could play, but it really wasn't all there. So C minus, but I'm not doubting his future. But again, that's off this year alone. Next pick. Mike Hughes, I gave a B. It was kind of back and forth on this one, too, because, you know, if he never got hurt, you expected this in the A range, possibly. look real good um, in that Mike Zimmer defense. But then he, he missed so much time, I think, 
where I had to keep it at a B because he, he, the way he was playing, I think w- the way he played was at the very least a B plus, probably an A minus or an A level, but uh, too many games missed, I guess. So it kind of drops down to a B, but it should, if he stays healthy, should have a bright future. Pick 31, Sony Michelle. This one I was back and forth on too. I originally had an A because, you know, people want to compare. Like the other video, this is the video where you can compare more. The other one you can't. Um, and, and Michelle versus like a Saquon Barkley. Barkley's obviously better. Um, I don't think it's a, he's a lot better. Like he's better, but I don't know if it's a, by an insane amount. So people want to compare. Are they really both A pluses? Um, but the reason for that plus was I do think Michelle was dominant. He did get hurt, but came back off the injury and played at a high level. But he's still helping them win games here, and they're going to be in the Super Bowl. And he's still helping them win games. I think he brings – this is why I love the pick so much during the draft. He brings a different game to the Patriots. They really haven't had it. Like a true running back that can do a lot of it, you know, and he can throw teams off, um, you know, with him pairing with uh, White and Burkhead. Uh, you know, I I, I love the, I love the fit here. I love that the Patriots added this. I think it made them that much better, and he's still helping them win throughout the playoffs into the Super Bowl here. So I thought that deserved the plus. You know, I, Barkley's better than Sony Michelle, but I hope everyone understands there. Thirty two was Lamar Jackson, the final one here. I gave an A minus. You know, he missed some of the season, um, so that kind of brings it down a little bit. It really wasn't his fault, but. But then at the same time, I don't think they make the playoffs without Lamar Jackson, so that kind of brings it up to an A plus. But and um, but again, you know, he didn't really have the best play, like compared to like Baker Mayfield. So um, and, and he missed some games. So I thought A minus was fitting. You know, thought about an A here, but uh, bright future like Lamar Jackson a lot. They got to use him right. Uh, you know, I thought they limited him too much in the playoffs. But an A minus, I I, th- I think, is very fitting for for Lamar Jackson's play. You know, you could argue his play is lower; it's not in the A range. But I think the fact that the way he got thrown in there, and, and without him, they wouldn't have made the playoffs, and they made the playoffs because of his help and what he was able to do there. I, I thought that I think that bumps him up. I think he gets in that A minus range there. So let me know your guys guys thoughts. Hope you're happy because I I think this is the video you guys were expecting with the other one. So now you got a now you got two of them. Now you got two of one. You can go back and watch the other one. Hope everyone understands. But um, kind of to explain it again, the other video starts with the draft. I make the first grades after the draft, and it is based off uh, the value of each pick. So, like, the third pick is different than uh, a pick in the teens. You know, they're different. If there's trades, that goes into it. Um, if there's an uh, injury possibility, that goes into it. Red flags, that goes into it. So a lot goes into the draft. Um, you know, I'm willing to change grades, as you can see. Uh, but I do trust my board at the same time because it's not a one-year end result. It's future. This video is based off the players. This is a player grading video based off 2018 season. The other one was, it was, it was a little different. So now you got two different videos there, uh, and then there's going to be a third one, which is back to the draft. You know, It's going to be draft class grades. We're going to go back and regrade those, look at uh, a class as a whole for each team, and give a grade to a team. So that should be a lot of fun. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate the support. We got to that 10K subscriber goal. That was fantastic. We're going to come up with another goal, but we can't thank you enough. Support's been unreal this last year. Unbelievable. So that's going to do it. Stay tuned for more. Uh, check out those links, links in the description. Got plenty of stuff going on in there. Um, that's going to do it, though. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everyone's support. Goodbye.